Oh, damn it. Proud soon to be owner of a PlayStation 5. Mm-hmm. That's it, that's all I got. Next talk. Yeah. I, don't know that's it. I, I am genuinely happy for you. I am. But it's kind of like the way that like the last girl in the group to get married is happy for the second to last girl. You know, like that sort of like backhanded, like, nobody deserved this more than yeah. you. You really earned right. this. I'm happy for you. It's kind of like that. Yeah, it's like the, the she she'll go through a couple months of existential dread about how she's going to be alone for her whole life <laughs> before she finds the man of her dreams. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Exactly. Except with video games, like something that totally doesn't matter in real life whatsoever. Just but right. but same thing. <laughs> Have fun playing Demon Souls by yourself, bitch. I don't care. <laughs> Weirdly, it's not going to arrive until like December fifteenth. I was like, if, if Walmart I was has wondering stock, what the what the like what the deal was with that, like if it was a couple weeks or what. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I literally got mine today. Uh, for those of you listening at home, I uh, was Derek and I both basically paid the equivalent of blackmail for the chance to gamble on a PlayStation Five. Uh, Walmart, I want you to know. Well, maybe I shouldn't say anything derogatory to my PlayStation. Yeah, wait till it gets there. Yeah, I'll go though. I don't mind. I <laughs> I completely pulled a Karen. I, I'm not even kidding. I asked for a refund. Did you really? I was very polite about it. I wasn't I wasn't a Karen. That's a bad. I wasn't like, hey, fuck you guys. This is ridiculous. I was just like, hey, I paid for a service that didn't really work the way it was supposed to. And I'm never going to use it again. And I already canceled <laughs> it. Can we maybe yeah. send that back my way? I'd have been like, to be uh, to be completely frank, I only purchased Walmart Plus for a slim gamble, apparently, yeah. and the chance to get a PS5, which is a shitty business tactic. Uh, I've had your service for less than 24 hours. Please refund my money post haste. So I think not to like belabor this point too much, but I think I actually figured out what happened. Why? Since you were in queue after me, you got one and I didn't. I think okay. that it's regional. I think that depending on the Walmi that's closest oh. to you and its popularity, they sent a certain amount to each one. And because okay. without doxing you, you happen to be right. a Walmart that's basically the size of a fucking mall. They probably got a shitload. And uh, I'm next to one that's basically the size of like a townhome. They probably only got a couple uh, and just sold out quicker. That's my best guess. It could be regional. That, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, listeners, we're sorry for <laughs> filling your ears with dribble. Oh, yeah. The point sorry. is, I'm going to have I'm gonna need to play Demon's Souls. I don't I was actually thinking really hard. I'm like, is there anything else out right now? That I actively wanted a PS5 for, and the answer is no. Were really, you into Ratchet and Clank? That looks really good. It does look really good, and I'll probably play it um, just to not immediately get buyer's remorse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like like I know that it's going to like I I'm God of War two. Yeah, and the the new Spider Man game, but that's not twenty till twenty twenty three. God of War two, I think it's coming next year, but they haven't announced the date for it yet. Um, they you know obviously the new Horizon uh, Zero Dawn Forbidden West looks really sick. Mm-hmm. And I know that there are even arguments to be made like, well, OK, but like the original Horizon Zero Dawn came to PC eventually, but it was literally years. Years, Yeah. Like after the game came out and I'm way too impatient. I was thinking uh, the same thing, like Demon Souls will probably make its way to PC eventually. But I mean, it's it's probably going to be a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and you got the disc version, too, right? I did. I was not actually planning on not doing that. I was going to tell you uh, off air if. If you or Ron happen upon a, a disc less version, just buy it and I'll trade you. Yeah. Um, I don't need mine. Well, you can watch 4K uh, Ultra HD Blu-rays, though, which is legit. That's uh, yeah. much higher quality than streaming. So that's something. No, it's a good deal. Like you said, I mean, you made a really good point. I just still wasn't ready to spend the money, but I did anyway. <laughs> uh, I actually straight up. I we we almost like it just in desperation after that whole thing. We almost bought like a seven hundred and fifty dollar one. And like, yeah, we came pretty close. And then thankfully, like done that, almost simultaneously, we both hit the bricks. We were like, what the fuck are we talking about right now? And so <laughs> like we, we, we didn't go through with it, but it came pretty close. Yeah. Um, what you had pointed out to everyone early on was that uh, 4K, you know, ultra fucking 
Blu-ray players are expensive. Yeah. They're not that cheap. Uh, and that, you know, having one built in for just a hundred bucks more than a, then the digital only PS five is actually kind of a, a good deal. Yeah. Um, however, I was just like, yeah, okay, but I don't, I don't buy anything physical and I don't watch 4k. Yeah. Stuff. But now you Usually. can when Dune comes out. But, boom. Yeah. Oh, true. I can come over because by the time that comes out a year from now, I probably still won't have a PS5. <laughs> the red in the background is representative of my rage that I did not get a PS5 today. By the way, that's what that <laughs> signifies for anyone watching this on YouTube. Oh, what is that Pixar movie? That <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, your your joy and I'm anger or whatever. <laughs> that's hilarious and also pretty close to I think real life, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um. Okay, we've got stuff to talk about. A lot of this is week in review. Um, one thing in particular happened almost exactly a week ago today, which is the Spider-Man trailer, mm. uh, which we can still talk about. I feel like we've talked about it uh, ad nauseum amongst ourselves, yeah. which we have, uh, because it's been out for so long and people have already dove in and dissected it. It came out like the day after or the yeah, it was the day after we recorded our last mm -hmm. podcast or, or two days, I think. And um kind of took the fucking internet by storm so we'll chat about that later uh a bunch of weekend review stuff though some game previews um but hashtag fuck bobby kotick from uh activision blizzard no really really some really juice stuff in there and then our main topics today are going to be dunkirk which we mentioned mm -hmm. last week in our rant about christopher nolan and his shit films and uh leaving suspense as to whether or not we think this was also a shit film and then uh, the live action Cowboy Bebop adaptation has released as of Friday the 19th on Netflix, and we will be discussing that as well. Uh, before we get started, I have one final thing to say, uh, and that is welcome, welcome, welcome. That's good. You got me. Episode, <laughs> episode 46 of The Cynical Nerd. I don't have a title yet. We'll figure it out on the fly like we always do. We can review. We have, uh, I'm sorry, hang on. Hold the fucking phone, boys. Derek, how are you? How are you oh, geez. Yeah, thanks. It was really, <laughs> I, I gotta be honest, I'm filled with blinding rage. Um, <laughs> just shaking. Just like, just total, it's unbelievable. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, it's, it sucks. I kind of expected it to not happen anyway. I had a good way, a good day at work. It's, it's sort of that of a uh, week of a holiday thing going on. where like, right, nobody right. really expects anything of anyone. Uh, so, you know, just been kind of coasting through the week, making, making that dough still. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Like that juice. Yeah. Juice works for everything. Yeah, it does. It's, it's very, <laughs> any, how are you, Christopher? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm actually off this week from work. I took off. Uh, I think we're naturally off of work Thursday and Friday anyway, so I just took the extra three days and made it a full week. Right, pretty good um, play. Yeah, my, my wife and I, just to give you the play-by-play, -play, woke up, dropped him off at school. Uh, she, pick up, she picked up uh, breakfast from Chick-fil-A on the way back. Very nice. Which was pretty pretty delicious. Um, we're, she's catching up on Ted Lasso, so we're, we started season two okay. this morning. Watched a couple episodes, banged on that real quick. Uh, went to the store <laughs> to pick up some just to put Christmas decorations. There. Yeah, just to throw that out there. It was pretty quick, you know. Uh, I, I can make it quick when we have target errands right, to run. Got shit uh, to do. <laughs> yeah, I uh, hit the bullseye, and then we went to the store with the bullseye on the store. So it makes a, a lot of logical sense. And uh, picked up some fun Christmas decorations for the house. We've never put up Christmas lights because I mean, we, well, I don't know, laziness probably. We used to rent the house we used to live in, and then. Uh, I just I didn't actually have a ladder last year, which is not mm. interesting content to talk about at all. But it, I thought it's real it was life very shit. interesting. It grounds Can us. Can we you know, like zoom in more on about you not having a ladder? Like, how did that resolve? I feel like there's a whole yeah. sort of arc <laughs> well, there, there that was a, a good conclusion. There is an arc. It started with me uh, saying I don't have a, a ladder to to hang course, these and reach the right. Like, the, like all great stories gutter. begin. Yeah. Right. All great with the <laughs> the <laughs> the groundwork laid for the plot ahead. Yeah. How do I get up there? That's how they uh, all start. <laughs> My father-in-law asked my wife what I what I could use around the house for Christmas last year. I said a ladder. He bought me a really nice one. It's been sitting in the basement. I've used it two times, I think, in the past year. Yeah. And uh, its sole purpose for existing in this house is about to come to fruition. I think we're going to hang the lights up uh, tomorrow. I think we're going to do that. Yeah. I'm so afraid of la ladders. Like, I legitimately have, like, a phobia of ladders that when other people talk about how they need to get up on a ladder, like, get up on the roof or whatever... I become nervous for them. Like, and so now, Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, this isn't a joke. 
Like there's such a carryover in, in how much fear it gives me that knowing that you're going to be do it. I now like, it's like a final destination thing. Like I feel like you're going to die and I'm the only one who can stop that from happening, but you don't believe me because I sound <laughs> ridiculous right now. Well, I'll, I'll make sure to, uh, I won't tell you when I'm going to go on the ladder. So you don't have like anxiety, about I'll the start be texting time. you like, are you okay? And like taking out your phone to check is what makes you fall off the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll, I'll make sure I send you one like like the home safe texts. I'll, t- I'll send you like a right, right. on the ground floor. Just you know, mark yourself safe from happened. ladder on Facebook. That way I know. <laughs> if I can do that, I will do that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I'll tag you safe from ladder. Um, all right. So first off, we can review. Um, also, this coincides with the release of Halo Infinite multiplayer, which we could give thoughts on since yeah. we played it a bit. The Halo, the ever rumored Halo television show. Is finally going to see the light of day, apparently, over Paramount Plus uh, streaming 2022. They released a trailer on November 15th, which I, th- I think is the same day the uh, multiplayer dropped because it was like the 20th anniversary of Halo. The first one coming out November 15th, uh, 2001. I, I do believe I just got to say. Um, this looks like a cosplay trailer, like it looks like a fan film. I just I don't. I don't know. I we've talked about the 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 bygone era of the faceless protagonist yeah. uh, that doesn't really happen anymore. And I I don't know how you have a show based around someone whose face you never properly see, um, or how you invest emotionally in someone whose background is is fairly mysterious. Yeah. Look, I know there's been novels written about like the training and the surgeries he's gone through and shit. I gotta tell you, I don't think any of it's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it, so. and it, it like there's just there, there's no way this won't suck, and it's really what it comes down to is like <laughs> it's not even about the source material. It's just like anytime anything has been like rumored at for fifteen plus years, it's never good. Like by the time it finally actually happens, it's always uh, well, not always, but ninety nine percent of the time, it's bad. Um, yeah, but I agree. It's like the the Master Chief thing is like barely working in the games anymore. I mean, obviously. Right. They're still an extremely lucrative and successful company, but um, it, it critically, it's not really um, where it was years ago. So, I mean, like bringing it into a new medium w- where you really have to have those sort of close up intimate aspects for every character in the show. It's going to work even less. I mean, I, I just can't imagine this being anything but just goofy and yeah. shitty CGI. <laughs> I yeah, will say, though, like- that the, bo- the books do expand on, on the Spartans and their training. And, and it, it is actually just from purely a, a sci fi um, aspect. It is pretty interesting. Um, but it's one of those things like for every, you know, three, four books they released, like one of them was good and the other three were like poo poo. Uh- and so eventually it's kind of like, all right, you just sort of give up on it. Like that's not a good enough ratio to read all of these fucking things. Right. There's not enough. There's not enough gems in here. Not enough juice in here. Not enough Tweet juice. The word of the day. To or juice with too much through. pulp. Gets stuck in your teeth. <laughs> uh, Ugh. I love orange juice with pulp. Though. I am disgusted with you right now. Let's continue, please. <laughs> it's been a joke for years, but uh, oh man, what a transition that was! But uh, Will Smith shouting "Welcome to Earth" as he punches an alien in the uh, 1996 film Independence Day is finally. Working out in his favor, there's going to be a new TV show called Welcome to Earth, starring Will Smith. Uh, it's going to be a docu series making its way to Disney Plus. I, you know what? As silly as like the the premise of the name of the show is, I'm actually looking forward to this. I Will Smith is like a charming individual. He he's always come across as a nice guy. Um, his uh his book is coming out really soon, and I keep hearing like the most ridiculous excerpts from it. Like they keep hitting the news. Like apparently at one point when he had like no money, he borrowed 10 grand from like a drug dealer for something. Right, like I right. just heard that yeah. one today. I'm not kidding. Um, Welcome to earth is set to arrive on Disney plus December 8th. Uh, it's an exclusive Disney plus release. Well, no shit it is, uh, but it's basically a six part documentary from national geographic. And it's going to be him going off and exploring really beautiful and dangerous places on earth. But, That's where uh, we live for anyone yeah, who's I uninitiated mean, earth is sort of the planet that we all inhabit. If you're listening to this, you're yeah. on Earth. Just to just to sort of tie um, everything together. Fun fact, and also something that kind of surprised me. Uh, Darren Aronofsky, 
who directed Black Swan is yeah. the executive producer of the series. It's very bizarre. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's random as shit. But I, I think Will Smith is a cool guy. He's, he seems down to earth. I, I <laughs> down to earth. Um, I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> I feel like his 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 uh, his upcoming optimism and wonder at the at the places he goes, which I assume he has not been to many of these locations in his life before, uh, is going to be like a good like lens. Because a lot of the times you get these people who have who like their whole job is doing this all the time, and they're like, "And this is the Amazon rainforest where there are six point two billion." Sp-. And you're like, "Okay, well, I get it." Yeah, like it. Liter- <laughs> little does the yeah. audience know, this is my fortieth time being here. All the majesty yeah. is worn off. Yeah, I yeah, uh, wish I had a by time 12 machine. Different species. <laughs> I wish I had a time machine so I could go fifteen minutes into the future where I just forget that this entire premise exists whatsoever i have no interest in anything with will smith i actually you know you said he, he's a uh, uh, down-to-earth and good-spirited guy apparently he's not apparently he's a fucking asshole in real life um really i had read this first-hand account uh, well, the, well that he's a good actor so. yeah <laughs> I, that uh got me that, but he's always doing i've talked about it on the show before like in he's one of these people like gal gadot and COVID that he's like on the back of his like just mansion where he's like don't worry guys everything's gonna be okay it's like everything's going to be okay for you because you have a lot of money. Like we're not on the same page. We're on two totally different tax brackets. Um, I had read that like now, granted this is a long time ago, but it was on the set of um, uh, what's the one easy in with uh, Martin Lawrence. Um, oh shit. Um, right. Like I, I should bad boys. That's it. So some kid like his dad owned property that like the studio was like, we want to film this here. And his only thing was, all right, I want my kid to just meet uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Like, that's all I want. I don't need any money. I don't need whatever you can film here. And like Will Smith just like gave these kids the cold shoulder. And like when they would walk up to him, he'd be like, I'm working right now. Leave me alone. Like he was just a piece of shit. And like, and then like Martin Lawrence had to like pick up all of his slack for him. And I've just read all these stories about people who meet him. And it's kind of like how you hear Bill Nye. like Bill Nye seems like a genuine nice guy. Apparently meeting him in real life, he's a piece of shit, like complete, just awful really? asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he is a oh. fucking dickhead. And like to kids, like that's, that was his audience for years. Uh, and he, he's just like an asshole to people. Um, not that you are not entitled to be an asshole just because you're famous, but it's just that he presents himself as if he's like this really beamingly nice guy that I'm just like, fuck you. Uh, no, pass for me. Big pass. It is weird. You mentioned them. Darren Aronofsky, and for years he was my favorite director. The fact that he has anything to do with this is like kind of bizarre to me, but I don't know. Yeah, it, is, it was really. That's why I said a weird fact about this. Is it really was a weird fact. I got to say, and I know it feels. It's not the, the same, obviously, uh, but the analogy could be made. It makes me feel a little bit like I'm standing up for giant corporations by saying I doubt some of those he's an asshole claims. Yeah. But I do. Like, you, you got to imagine, like, you, you, it's the same thing in like the business world. Like you could deal with a hundred people a day where you have perfectly pleasant interactions and they never say anything about it. And then the one person who you get a little snarky with tells everybody that you're an asshole. And I just feel like it could be the same thing, especially with like famous actors and, and people like Bill Nye, like who not only deal with the public all the time, but all these people who have their own opinions about the last fucking movie you were in and how yeah. you did. And Bill Nye, like, the guy been pushing climate change against the more and more polarized society. I can only imagine the fucking harassment yeah. he gets on the streets now. You know what I mean? And, I, and I'm with you. Again, like, I, I do agree with that. And I think and that's why I said, like, I, I don't think if it's OK for anyone who's not famous to be an asshole, then it's OK for famous people to be assholes, too. <laughs> uh, like, but a lot of those accounts that you read, like when you really read into them. Again, very, I'll make this very short. Jim Gaffigan, who's the last person in the world that I want to defend, but was it Disney World, like with his family? <laughs> yeah, he's a real piece of shit. And right? I was, no, like he was reading, I was this, I was reading this post from this guy who ran into him. He's there with his wife and kids at Disney World. And this dude comes up, he's like, Can I have a photo? And Jim Gaffigan was like, Ah, oh, dude, like I'm with my family right now. Like when I have family time, I don't do like the photos and signatures and stuff. Yeah. And the dude was totally like, He's such a piece of shit. And everybody in the comments I was like, that. You were the piece of shit in that scenario, man. Like he's with his family. <laughs> Fucking leave him alone. So I, I do yeah. agree with you there, but I don't know. I just, I just don't yeah. like Will Smith. No, that's fair. I mean, you can not like whoever you want to not like. Well, thank um, you for the permission. I, I appreciate yeah. that. That PS5 really changed you, huh? <laughs> 
And now you have my permission to die. Um, okay. Next up, a, a piece of shit report. Speaking of piece of shits. Oh, we're two for two. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been if I hadn't pointed it out beforehand. Um, Bobby Kotick, who we talked about earlier, hashtag fire Bobby Kotick. And I'm 100% on board bandwagoning anybody who listens to, to go tweet about this piece of shit because Blizzard suffered all these all these huge like PR disasters because uh, you know we've talked about it before we actually had a standalone segment that I put up as a YouTube video about it so I won't rehash a lot of that stuff but the state of California decided to sue Activision Blizzard over their discrimination policies in the office and their supposed frat boy culture uh, horrible treatment of women you, you name it basically uh, it was done you know they named a suite at the hotel the Cosby suite which is uh, beyond fucking disgusting it was after his initial allegations they can't claim innocence on that shit. Anyway, uh, Bobby Kotick, who notoriously has been uh, not the favorite of Blizzard fans for a while now over things like how much money he's been making mm-hmm. off over the company. just a re- ins- He's like the poster child when people talk about how much more the CEO makes versus the rest of the people he- that yeah. work for him. Um, has been outed in a Washington, uh, yeah, Washington, in a Wall Street Journal post that Kotaku picked up. So Kotick according to the Wall Street Journal, not only ignored and downplayed the longstanding harassment against female employees within Activision Blizzard, but was also an active participant in the frat boy culture that led the state of California to file a lawsuit. Uh, He's said to have harassed an assistant in 2006, telling her he would kill her in a threatening voicemail. They settled that out of court, a.k.a. he paid her a lot of money. But the voicemail exists. Like, it's not that's not in dispute. Like, he did that. Um and, and you know, there's a, there's a lot of gross reports, and, and this was actually like last week. The the fifteenth, uh, this article came out, and since then, a ton more stuff has happened. So social media blew up with demands that he resign. That article, and, just to interject really quick, was so interesting yeah. because like there were so many updates of shit that has happened since the original article <laughs> yeah. was written that it's like more updates than it is until you get to the actual yeah. original article. Just because like every day, every hour, there's like some new thing coming yeah. out about him. Yeah, there were a group, I think, of over 100 Blizzard employees who signed a petition and did a walkout that said, we will not be silenced until Kodak has been replaced as CEO, and we continue to hold our original demand for a third-party review by an employee-chosen source. 100%. Like, that's like, that's like bare fucking minimum. Uh, after that, a group of shareholders, led, led by Union Pension Group, the SOC Investment Group, called for his resignation and the retirement of two other board members. I uh, was signed by a handful of investment groups, several of which focus on supporting women. Uh, that's a little more crazy. Mm-hmm. Shareholders don't typically get involved in doing that. And then Activision Blizzard leadership was reported to continue to stand by and battle CEO Bobby Kotick during an all hands. Uh, they, they did like an internal meeting. They answered pre-screened questions. And then last but not least, in this article at least, uh, this was 1118. The uh, ABK Workers Alliance recently published a document signed by more than 500 employees mm-hmm. calling for his removal. Same kind of shtick as before. Um, beyond this article, both Phil Spencer at Xbox uh, and Sony PlayStation have come out and said that they are disturbed by the allegations against Blizzard. So far as uh, I believe an internal email from by Phil Spencer at Xbox said they will be reviewing their relationship with Activision mm-hmm. Blizzard. These are not small things. You think of Blizzard, you think of World of Warcraft, but because Activision bought them, this means Call of Duty. Yeah. So if if and let's be real here, if Sony and Microsoft wanted to make a really big deal out of this, they could get Call of Duty off their platforms. Wouldn't have to be forever. They could do it for like a blackout day or something. Yeah. Something that made some difference because those games would literally be dead in the water if that happened. Yeah. So you want real change. There's a way to make it happen. I don't think they'll do it because um, I have too much cynicism. Yeah. Even being the optimistic host of this podcast for something meaningful like that. But I've been rambling. Derek, how do you feel about Bobby Kotick being a piece of shit? No, it's just, you know, it, <laughs> not that I'm saying that like anybody who does shit like this should uh, have the freedom to slink away and just hide in obscurity and get away with it. But it's always right. crazy to me. Like when, like all the shit that's been coming out about Blizzard Activision for whatever it's been three, four months, like how is he still, how do you not just like fucking just like, 
take the money and run like back out while you can while i can't believe he hasn't resigned that's what i'm saying yeah. like it's it's absurd and it just shows that he there's just a certain level of arrogance there i also saw i don't know if i misread this but it looks like you know people have been talking about his salary for years i think he finally took that salary cut and it's like just too little too late it's like when uh Kevin Spacey was like, you know, touching kids and all of a sudden he comes out like, oh, well, by the way, I'm gay. And it's like, dude, dude, what? We're not talking about that anymore. Like you, we're talking about like serious shit that you've done. Like like this yeah. doesn't matter anymore. Well, I mean, it still matters, of course, because of the inequality between uh, uh, developers and the CEO. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's like it's like we're, we're past that now, man. We're talking about something else. We're talking about something way less forgivable. Um, yeah. But there was another. Yeah, he's basically like um, settled out of court. He's been like threatening people. Always seems to be women. Um, and his face <laughs> is stupid. Doesn't he have the worst face in the world? It's like there's a black hole in his nose sucking everything oh, inward. 100% the worst face. The worst face of it. Very punchable face. Top yeah. top 10 punchable faces of all time for sure. I, I would actually go so far as to say top three. That's, 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 that's good. That's a bold, that's a bold <laughs> claim. Bold strategy, Cotton. Yeah. Let's see if it pays off for him. Um. Yeah, I mean, he took the, he announced he was taking the pay cut after the initial allegations and, and basically tried to take that pay cut and then say, uh, I won't, you know, re- reinstate my pay until like the conditions here are fixed or whatever for the employees. And yeah, that was before these additional allegations. There was some other noise and I don't have it in front of me about um, there was originally like kind of like a, a tone deaf email written to the employees at blizzard after the initial allegations and it, came, it had come for, it supposedly come from someone else internally turns out he wrote it mm-hmm. um, I, I don't want to speak at a turn because i don't have the info in front of me but he he basically like like pre-wrote an email that someone else sent to the company that was also kind of fucked up um i just see he, he's just you know just get the fuck out of here you know what i mean yeah and I the worst about part it. of it is is like you know you, you hear about all this stuff it's coming out now and so you think that it's happening now and you talk about the golden age of blizzard but really a lot of this shut the shit goes that far back and so it's yeah. it's just disturbing to think that i spent all those years uh supporting a company that's just doing extremely unethical shit um yeah and the fact that so little has changed, I, I haven't read up on that. I know like the state of California um, was suing them on like two counts. I have, I, the, I literally heard they were doing that and that's the last I ever looked into it. So I'll have to like get more <laughs> up to date on that. But um, it's just like, it's, you feel kind of dirty knowing yeah. that you willingly kind of were batting for them for so long. Yep. So hopefully this guy gets the fuck out, I guess. Yeah. In a stupid I, I tiny have- face. He's got a, the weirdest. He's got like a mousy. It's like an anteater. Like it all sucks inward and it goes out a little bit, kind of. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All right. Um, what do we got next? What do we got next? Ooh, Dying Light Two preview came out. And I actually give me bear with me for a second because uh, the, I had this preview up from uh, Kotaku, and there was another that I had just read. The other day and it it gave me some very interesting um uh, what i would only refer to as uh titty bitties <laughs> really some titties and about. bitties yeah 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 yeah. let's oh, see so I, I actually think it was an ign article here yeah here it is okay so dying light 2 was originally supposed to come out this year i think this month i uh, got it got pushed back to the same uh month actually which i'm just now realizing live on podcast could be a problem for my Tension span uh, in February 2022. So it's going to come out oh, the same month uh-oh. as Elden Ring. Yeah, that's yeah. not good. Yeah, yeah. Retro. Uh, if I could do a, a, an effective Scooby Doo, I totally would right there. That was effective. That got it done. Retro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a lot better, though. That was a 100% uh, increase in quality. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Techland produced the first one. They're making this one, too. Uh, we've talked about this before. <clears throat> Back when Scooth was still on the podcast with us. Uh, just about how much him and I enjoyed the first one. I think you were kind of like, meh, didn't yeah. really capture me kind of kind of feeling. Dying Light 2, they released a four hour preview to uh, news outlets and by all accounts, impressions from all outlets seem to be pretty positive. Uh, and what caught me and the, the reason I brought up the IGN article is that something I actually didn't know. Dying Light 2 takes place 20 years after the collapse of society. So 
I assume, you know, that's like 18 to 20 years after the first game came out. Mm -hmm. uh, humanity has fallen back into a more modern medieval period. And, you know, there's places like the Bazaar, which is exactly what you would think. A big, a big marketplace with a bunch of people. It's the primary safe zone. in uh, old Villador, uh, where the, the bulk of the playthrough took place. And it just sounds like it's going to be like, I keep getting like Horizon Zero Dawn, but like, obviously not but you know like but like um i'm trying to think of like it's it's more medieval but they're still using technology wherever they can because it's still 20 years after the fall you know they have these customized weapons like in the first one that'll use some wire with a battery attached if you know if they can they still have them around mm -hmm. um it just the imagery looks really great but the thing that stuck out to me about it uh about this preview and specifically from this ign article was that in the, in the first one they had uh, they had incentives to go out at night. Like you literally got like double XP and all that shit uh, at night. And there were some missions that had to be done at night. There were some uh, fetch quests and boss encounters. You could only get at night, but in this one, the incentive seems to be a lot higher. So during the daytime, uh, the undead, I don't know if they have a, a unique name for them in this game. I totally forget, but the undead will huddle inside of buildings uh, which means the traversal is safer outside, but trying to scavenge for resources is more dangerous. Mm -hmm. You can't get into a lot of these sites. Uh, at night, those buildings empty out, and they're all in the streets, so the infected the, are out in higher numbers. It's obviously much more dangerous to be out at night. There are special infected, but the buildings are open to be looted mm. internally. Um, and they also, another thing that caught my attention before I ask your thoughts on this is... You know, they said, uh, you know, on the ground floor, it's it's like a wasteland. There's a ton of zombies, swaths of brown and gray, all the remnants of an abandoned society. But if you look to the rooftops, you'll find greenery as far as the eye can see. There's trees and overgrown ga grass on all the linings of the dilapidated buildings. Survivor camps are at the, most of the tops of buildings. They're powered by, you know, um, they're powered by uh, solar, um, you know, the wind, rickety windmills to help create safe zones with UV lights. And I just thought the idea of this like upward growing society that's like it's real green and gorgeous up here and you drop mm -hmm. down to a certain level and it's like the it's like the filth of like Daisy or something. You know what I mean? Like just this grimy. Um, I just thought that was really cool. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it a lot. I, th I think it, it looks really cool. They, they've got a lot of cool tools to get around in this one that I don't think they had in the first one is a paraglider to get around skyscrapers. Um, really, some really cool shit. But uh, did you check out this uh, this preview? Did you read anything about? It? Yeah, uh, it, you know, I'm I'm conflicted because I'm really I have like zombie fatigue. Like I don't care about zombies anymore. I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, and one one thing about the article that kind of kind of irked me a little bit was it was like uh, the different thing about dying light is it's less about the zombies and more about the survivors. That's every zombie thing ever. The zombies are secondary secondary to everything that's happening and it's more about the survivors and how yeah, they're hurts. dealing with the new world that they're in, whatever the mechanics uh, and, and tools and stuff like you were saying of this game seem incredible though. Like, and watching some of the, the game pay, geez, gameplay trailers. Uh, it looks right. like a lot of fun. I think that's the most important thing uh, not to say something uh, totally obvious, but that a game should be fun. Um, I, I, I'd seen in there something about they're going for like, um, sort of a modern day return to medieval times. That's like interesting to me, whatever that could mean. Like, are there little like fiefdoms or whatever, where like this person's the baron of this territory and you have to like, you know, abide by his rules when you're in that day. You know what I mean? Like that could be interesting. Right. Um, but I just don't, I just don't care about zombies. Like even when they're done in a new way, like, um, uh, the last of us, you know, they're like a, a, a fungal creature that makes you go insane and attack other people, which spreads the spores like, all right. That, yeah, that's that's like a new take on zombies, but it's still zombies at its core. Like, it's still the same right. fucking thing again and again and again. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not going to play this because I, I actually like I said, it, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, I love like parkour and games. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I still haven't fired. I know but every time we bring it up on the show, I say I'm going to fire up the first one because I own it. It was gifted to me. Um, and I did when it was gifted to me, play the first almost nothing like hour, hour and a half. And it's not <laughs> that it was bad or anything, but I, it just didn't like hook me in. So I never went back. Right. To it. 
excuse me. Um, but it no, it looks good. I, I, I actually look forward to playing it. Yeah. I'm uh think it will be a good time. Twill. I have to see. I think it's quill. Uh there's also some faction information. I mean, obviously that kind of is like the nitty gritty. Uh, but it looks like as of now they've revealed two different factions, the peacekeepers and the survivors. Uh, each offering its own benefits and perks, and apparently if you liberate a facility, you have the choice of which faction you give it to, which will differ what perks and benefits you get from it. So, like, Peacekeepers, you get combat-related perks, like arming all vehicles in the controlled area with remote-controlled car bombs, um, while granting things to the survivors will do stuff like making traversal easier, uh, like having zip lines that allow for easier rooftop travel in that area. But uh, the, and they said like the the key is like the more and more you ally with one side, the higher the perks get. But also, of course, completely alienating the other. Yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, they they put a lot of love Techland into the first game. They did a lot of cool DLCs above and beyond what I think people expected for Dying Light. It was it didn't come out to be a smash hit. It it did pretty well, but they just kept growing and growing. And uh, I hope the second one's the same way, yeah. a grower and not a shower. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pretty good. Uh, okay. What does your shirt uh, say? We have. I was just Marvel. Oh, I thought it said manic. I was like, that's a weird thing to just sort of put out there. Huh? <laughs> Is that your impression um, of mania? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what it's like. I'm way too laid back. <laughs> huh? Simitar, right? <laughs> I got it yeah. this time. Uh, look, so it's pretty clear that the Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be exclusive to the Xbox and PC, but Phil Spencer's a piece of shit and won't come out and say it. Basically, that's the, that's the point of this entire article. We can skip most of it. <laughs> so, <coughs> the hotly anticipated open world sci-fi RPG Starfield comes out next year, uh, but they've already said it won't be coming to PS4 or PS5, which is fine. We both play on PC anyway. Yeah, we do. Uh, which we is do. which is why which is why my console. Variety is always a high-end gaming PC and the PlayStation console of that generation, because the PlayStation always has at least a couple. Uh, uh, what the f- how Exclusives. really? Thank you, Jesus! Right out of my head. Happy to be I here. I was like, no, come back. Uh, exclusives that are worth it for me, even even if that means I'm only playing something that com- comes out a year or two earlier than it will come out on PC. I'm still totally okay with that. Um, yeah, and you know, and now they're releasing. We talked about I talked about this when they announced it uh, like a, like a year ago uh, that all these Xbox games are going to be coming out on PC as well because you know Microsoft owns both surprise mm-hmm. and um I just I just couldn't understand from Microsoft's perspective and I'm still not complaining but I still don't understand what their goal is with the Xbox console I mean it I, it, it feels like it's a nice luxury to have to have an, your own ecosystem in that space. But at the same, and I and I get it. I know not everyone has the drive or the wherewithal to to build and maintain your own PC. Um, but I just, you know, you put all your exclusives on a secondary platform; they're not exclusive anymore. I don't know if anyone told Microsoft that. Well, I think that's what it is. I I think it's essentially like they well, they spent all that money buying up all these IPs um, because they they knew they were losing the exclusives uh, that Sony had gotten back are what people talk about with PlayStation. Like even PC games are like, yeah, but I have to have a PlayStation because I love the last 100% of us, or I love 100% War. won the last console generation. Like without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. And, yeah. and, and they're winning this one too. Um, I think that their whole life, uh, I mean, you said it, a, a PC is not for a lot of people an economical reality. Um, and so it's basically that or the Xbox. So they kind of win either way. Um, that's that's the only thing I can think of. This is this was a shitty move, though. When they bought all those IPs, um, they, they made a public announcement. I think we talked about it on the show that they said everything we've announced so far is still going to be uh, uh, multi-platform on uh, PlayStation and uh, Xbox. And now they're just backpedaling on it. Um, they're realizing the amount of money they- that they're going to lose on on Elder Scrolls six, which does anybody fucking care about this game that's not going to come out? for another nine years anyway. Like, I don't know. <laughs> They're just putting all their eggs in this one basket. And it's like, I just don't care anymore. There are better fantasy games. There are better fantasy franchises. I'm not like 
patiently there are waiting far for this less game. buggy. Yeah, way, way less buggy. Uh, Dark Souls, for instance. Holy shit, I am in love with this game, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Nah, we're not nah, talking nah, about nah, how nah. I'm stuck on Dragon Slayer well, armor. And it's... From Software has a very tight relationship with PlayStation. 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 Hence Bloodborne that uh, Xbox will never see. PC, yeah. hopefully, at some point, oh, we'll God, see. Oh, God, I hope. Uh, for, for my baby boy Derek's sake, and also because I, I would love to replay it. It's been plenty long enough. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so I just feel Spencer's just a piece of shit. Like, you know what? Just if you're going to make that decision, stand behind it. And I know he didn't make the choice. I'm sure a board of people did, but Phil, you're the face of Xbox for now. Uh, you have to be comfortable saying shit people don't want to hear. Unfortunately, it's just the name of the game. Uh, there was a British GQ article that said, you know, in no uncertain terms, it has been confirmed that next year's Starfield, which is one of the bigger anticipated games, it looks like a new IP from Bethesda. It looks like it, and we don't know a lot about the game yeah. besides a teaser trailer that came out, uh, but it will be Xbox and PC only. Again, Derek and I are fine with this. Yeah. Uh, Spencer's Spencer says he sees the same for Elder Scrolls Six. Like, like just. He just he wouldn't say to, the uh, actual uh, words. Uh, yeah, exactly. right. He, he then proceeded cool to say a whole speak. lot of words that weren't the word exclusive. Yeah. It's well, what, what angers me was not that because him saying I see the same for Elder Scrolls Six. That's that's basic confirmation. That's I don't need him to spell it the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. But he then goes on to say it's not about punishing any other platform. I fundamentally believe all of the platforms can continue to grow, but in order to be on Xbox, I want us to be able to bring the full complete package of what we have. Which that sentence makes no sense, by yeah. the way. And that would be true when I think about Elder, Elder Scrolls Six. That would be true when I think about any of our family. What he's just this is just corporate speak. Yeah. For um. Yeah. No. We 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 want to make a lot of money on these games, and therefore we're going to make them exclusive to Xbox. Yeah, it's dumb. We, we all knew it was going to happen when when Xbox formally purchased Bethesda, and that kind of came out of left field. Uh, and I don't think anyone had heard talks of them purchasing Bethesda. Uh, because the bigger studios like that normally don't get gobbled up by one or the other. Yeah. But uh, here we go. Uh, now PlayStation owns Insomniac, which is a huge studio for them. Yeah. Made Ratchet and Clank. They made the, they're making these Spider-Man games that have been critically acclaimed. And uh, Microsoft owns Buggy Skyrim, who will yeah. still be selling, I'm sure, the 10-year anniversary edition <laughs> pretty soon here. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is it's like... Uh, um Obsidian is doing this thing. I couldn't think of the studio name. Obsidian is doing this thing where they're they're taking Bethesda titles and they're making their version of it. Right. And which I'm totally okay with. It's it's a complete ripoff. They did it with Outer Worlds with Fallout. Now they're doing it with them, um, whatever the fantasy one is that's basically emulating Skyrim. And it seems like they're just do like, all right, so were they original which looks thoughts? Sick, by the way. It looks incredible. That's what he's gonna say. It looks incredible. Like, all right, so they're not the most original things in the world, but Really, nothing is anymore. I mean, we talk, were talking about it last week. Elden Ring, the game that yeah. we both anticipate more than any other game right now, is really just an amalgamation of every other Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Well, every other From Software game. Um, it's not that it's doing anything particularly new as much as it's just combining things in a new environment that looks incredible. Um, right. Now, unless you're like directly like copyright infringement. I don't see an issue with just saying like, Hey, you did it and that's great, but I can do it better. Um, I think that, uh, I don't think anything outer worlds was more, uh, uh, widely accepted than fallout four was uh, new Vegas and three had a really big following, but, uh, I believe the same is going to be for, uh, what is the name of the fucking game? The fantasy game they're doing. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be, um, uh, you know, accepted more than, than Skyrim was certainly after, I think it's nine, nine remakes now or re-releases rather. Um, so yeah. Avowed, I think. What is it? Avowed. Sh avowed. Like, I yeah, I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and they did announce Outer Worlds too. And so, I mean, Obsidian is a smaller studio, obviously, but, uh, and, and you can tell because Outer Worlds started. It's if you, did you play it? Uh, I started it. Yeah. Okay, if you when you start Outer Worlds, it feels like this huge, massive space thing with like all these multiple planets, and it is. And then as you go further and further into the game, the scope narrows yeah. a bit. And towards the end, you know, there's really only one path forward a little bit, and that it just feels like they started running out of budget, which I'm sure yeah. they did, uh, because they're a smaller studio. But Outer Worlds was very well received; they did great. Uh, they're behind Grounded, 
which is that, uh, you know, Daddy, I shrunk the kids. Mm-hmm. Or, honey, I shrunk the kids. Daddy sounds weird. Yeah. Daddy, yeah. I shrunk the kids. Oh, Daddy. Oh, it is 2021. Um, <laughs> you know, they've done a lot of stuff recently that's been getting more and more critical acclaim. They did the South Park Stick of Truth game. Mm-hmm. You know, Obsidian well, came Obsidian, to fame. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, going going as far back as uh, KOTOR, they did Knights of the Old, Old Republic 2, which was also well-received. Um, Sith Lords, which is pretty good. Pillars of Eternity, mm-hmm. which again was a direct ripoff of Baldur's Gate, but fucking yeah. incredible. An incredible modernized yeah. version of that. I'm actually playing it right now. Super, uh, and super where, cool. they, where, they, where they really came to the forefront in the RPG space is when they did Fallout New Vegas, because yeah. uh, people that's what people talk about when they talk about, we want to go back to this Fallout. A lot of people... I forgot that that was that. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. Well, specifically, I mean, when they were, when they were first marketing Outer Worlds, they were saying from the company that did Fallout New Vegas. Right. Um, so Avowed looks really good. I remember seeing the trailer for it, I think, last E3, uh, or the one before last mm-hmm. E3, because we just had one recently. Uh, and I I loved Outer Worlds. It did it totally I felt the narrowing in scope towards the end, but I loved that universe. I loved the game. The characters were great, the combat was fun. Um, the combat does this thing where it starts off really challenging in some spots. You're like, holy shit, this feels tough. And then as you unlock more abilities, it starts to like the curve yeah. is a little sharp to become like laughably easy towards the end when right. you're overpowered. So it could have did they could have did a couple things better, but it was a wonderful game, and I'm looking forward to the sequel. Um, and you know, fuck Microsoft for buying Bethesda. I mean, look, I can't I can't throw tar and feathers on on Microsoft without saying that Sony literally did the same fucking thing with Insomniac. Insomniac's not making Xbox games anymore. So, I mean, it is what it is, but. Bethesda, the kind of company who love them or hate them, holds the rights to Fallout, Wolfenstein, Doom. You know what I mean? I it's a lot. There's a different, <laughs> a, a big difference though between like basically Sony had to sell a lot of their um, exclusives uh, with the travesty of the PS3 launch because they lost so much fucking money. And I think like True. getting back to a point like, all right, we're we're gonna make this exclusive and that exclusive, and um, giving studios who they believe can do more, you know, more money with basically the caveat of, but you're only gonna do it for us is a little right. different than like making a decision and taking a bunch of announced games that people have been anticipating and uh, saying like, nah, actually, never mind. If you bought the PS five, go fuck yourself. I think that's just such a dick move. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I agree for a lot of people as we talked about, but again, doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect me. So this <laughs> is right. Good. Yeah. Make, make no mistake. Listeners. We're sitting pretty over here. We, uh, <laughs> I NPCs. We're ready to go. Yeah. Derek and I are both in the uh, 3080 club. Yes, yeah. we are. That's like yeah. the Mile High Club, except you don't get sex. You get, uh, well, you just get. I see games so many. <laughs> <laughs> I see so many people shit talking 3080s, and I can just taste the salt. They're like, they're not even that good. It's pretty fucking good, man. <laughs> yeah, they t- it tastes great. I love salty food. Uh, okay, last but not least in the video game news, and then I wanted to briefly talk about Halo Infinite and our experience so far. Um, Far Cry 6 announced their first DLC, and I gotta say, uh, it's just up the right weird alley that we expect Far Cry DLCs to take. So, Far Cry 3, uh, Far Cry 6 will be having their first DLC that stars Far Cry 3's notorious villain Voss, and it's going to be a weird roguelike, where, uh, you're gonna play as him. Uh, I mean, he he's famous for saying, and I don't think obviously did not make this phrase, but as he tells it in the game, it's one of his famous scenes. Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit to train, expecting shit to change. Uh, so it's kind of fucking perfect that they put him in a roguelike yeah. uh, game where that's going to be kind of exactly what it is. This is out now. Uh, Kotaku reviewed it. It's just a, a fun, weird, curious experiment. Uh, that's a little shorter than they would have liked. Honestly, they said it was a lot of fun. Um, it looks crazy. They have a trailer for it. Voss Insanity, it's called. Did you watch the DLC trailer for it? I d- I didn't watch the trailer. I read the article, but I didn't I didn't know there was a trailer. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I I never played at like Far Cry Three for more than I don't know six hours. Oh really? Far yeah. Cry Three was like the one everybody got into. Yeah, I don't know. It was okay, I guess. Uh, this looks this looks fun. This looks interesting. It looks like the type of DLC that I was hoping that the devs would come out with. I'm still going to buy Far Cry 6 when it goes on sale for 
at least $30. Yeah. I will not buy it for a penny more than that. Uh, it looks gorgeous. And um, uh, Giancarlo Esposito is always fun to watch do anything. He just shoots scenery. He's just entertaining. Apparently it's the same thing with Voss though. He's just not in it that much. Like he's like, the amount of scenes he's in is like way less than people were expecting. And when you have like a high ticket actor like him, I mean, it's, it, there's only so much of the budget that you can sink into that. Um, one thing I thought that was cool. We may have mentioned this before is that apparently like he plays, I guess like a dictator or whatever. And if you right. stop playing because you need like a Ubisoft account to play, which yeah. you have to have an email linked to, if you stop playing, his character will email you and be like, oh, yeah, I knew you wouldn't find me, you fucking pussy. I thought that's, that was a cool little touch. Um, but uh, I did hear about that. It's pretty cool. I think that um, it's cool that they're doing like something different like that, like the roguelike. I think that's a neat little aspect. But right there in the article, it says that um, it, it's very easy. Like th they didn't even die one time. And the whole point oh. of the road, like, is that it's supposed to be really, Punishing. really, really difficult. And you're supposed yeah. to have to try like 60 times before you make any kind of progression whatsoever. Um, so that was kind of like, all right, well, that defeats the, the point of doing a new thing like that. If you can just burn through it in one try, I don't know. Right. But uh, it, it, it's, it's a cool concept. I'll give it that. The end. That's all we have to say the, about that. The end. That's it. Sometimes yeah. things just end. <laughs> and that's okay. There's no reason to be upset about it. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about our impressions on Halo Infinite. Then we're going to get the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. I'm drinking my last two topics. White Claw Surges. Um, oh, I got how do you like those? So they're really good. I got 12 the other night, uh, and I drank 10 of them. Like, oh, without realizing at all what I was Was that doing. the late night? Oh, yeah. I was up until like 4.30. Oh, I didn't even realize yeah. it. Yeah. I I lost to Dragon Slayer armor like literally twenty times in a row, and I had the worst. Dude, I haven't had a hangover like an actual hangover in years. Holy shit! I could not get out of bed until like one o'clock the next day. Do not look if you get surges, listeners. Just get a six pack. Six They're pack like is eight percent. That's all you need. You do not they need a fuck twelve. Fuck you pack. up. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, that's a lot. I had two left, so I'm drinking them now, and they're both yeah. cranberry, which is my favorite flavor. So works out. Oh, you like that more than the other one? Yeah. I'll see. I'm different. I like blood orange better. Blood orange is pretty tight. Um, I think they have we, blackberry, we, we, we which tasted kind of like cough medicine and lime now. Oh, so. gross. Gross. There's always, anytime you get the variety pack, there's one flavor you don't like, at least. Uh, yeah, 100% in life. They're like, oh, who made this one? Oh, fucking Steve in accounting. Well, we're gonna, now we got to get rid of them, so we're going to make them for variety packs. <laughs> Uh, can I ask a universal question that you won't have the answer to? Uh, no, you Why cannot. Why does all no, cough cannot. medicine? Stop. Don't do it. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it anyway. Why does all cough medicine taste like complete shit? Exactly. No, I know. There's just, just no answer. The shrug. Yeah. My wife thinks I'm a giant baby and she, and she would be right. I am. That's true. But it's one but of those uh, things. I, it tastes so bad that like the under flavor, that's like really 5% of the flavor. That's cherry. When you like taste a cherry candy, you just taste the medicine. And that's the uh, case with no. this blackberry thing. It's like, I think it's the case of, you know how you've, um, I know that you know this when you, when we're younger drinking, you might, maybe you honed in on one thing that you really liked and you drank it, but you drank way too much of it. And now later in life, you can't even smell it without yeah. like wanting to vomit because you threw up so much times, so many times from drinking it. Yeah. Um, I like that, how you're like, actually, I know you're going to be able to relate to this alcoholic. <laughs> Well, I, I can sniff one of my own. So, <laughs> uh, yes, I can. <laughs> episode forty-six, smelly alcoholics. So we, uh, we, when I was younger, I remember, uh, you know, obviously you get head colds and shit all the time, but th every once in a while you have those landmark illnesses where, like, you actually had the flu, yeah, and were fucked up in bed for like days. And I, I'm telling this whole random story just to make a really silly point, but I'm going to do it anyway because now I'm do. committed. Um, It'd be weird it if was you stopped halfway through now. So, yeah, I know, right? Now I can just. Uh, but anyway, uh, but Halo Infinite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I got really sick. I was still in high school. Uh, I think I was driving myself to school at the point. Doesn't matter. Not not an important detail to the story. And uh, I was going to bed one night. Just I was like, oh, I get a shit, and I woke up and diarrhea. You know, right? And and I like and I did. proceeded to. I like you do. And I proceeded to wake up every couple hours throughout the night with these, the surprise diarrhea that I didn't expect. It came out of nowhere. Um, and then I, I started to like, I started to get like physically sick. 
and you know, by the my mom was downstairs, had no idea this was happening. We we had our own bedroom, our right. bathroom upstairs at, at the time, in my childhood home. Uh, very nice house. Now that I think back on it, you know what I mean. Everybody like yeah, that was nice because that's a piece of shit I live in now. It's nowhere near <laughs> as nice as that was. Uh, and my mom came to wake me up for school, uh, probably six thirty or something. And she she came to the bottom of the stairs and hollered up like she always did. And I w- I had just come out of the bathroom for I don't know the millionth time. I felt like I'm um, just exhausted because I'd woken up every couple hours. I feel like shit. And she's like, oh, you're up. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm just making you up for school. I just started crying. Like, I felt so <laughs> physically bad that I was just like, she's like, oh, you ready? And I was just like, Ugh. I just started crying. I told her what happened. And she was like, oh, my God, I'm going to bed. It's fine. So I stayed home. Um, I tell you the whole story to say that at some point around like four o'clock in the morning, when I realized like I'm really sick, something's wrong. I went, I snuck downstairs to the kitchen and I found some cherry medicine to take to thinking it might make me feel better. My stomach was so upset. I can taste it. Ugh. Yeah. That I took some and immediately threw up in the kitchen sink. And nice. here's the thing. I'm not saying it was just because I'm sick because I still have a hard time stomaching cherry medicine. It, I, it's like worse than hard liquor to hard shots of hard liquor to me. I take cherry medicine and I'm like for like 10 minutes. I just, I can yeah. feel it. It's disgusting. Uh, that was the whole story. It was Get a good story. Sure I was really hoping that when your mom came in to wake you up, you were going to shit yourself. That's where I thought you were going. <laughs> I thought you had such watery diarrhea. That's sort of the fear of like, knock, knock, knock. And you just like exploded yeah. watery diarrhea into your bed. Yeah. That's where I thought it, it probably, was going. Maybe it, when you it tell it next happened, time, yeah. I would just, I would just do that. Like, just, just lie. I mean, who cares? Yeah. That's true. I didn't embellish a single part of that story. Every every was 100% sure. I believe it. I also if, like can totally empathize with uh, to this day, I'm 33 years old. When I'm truly <laughs> sick, when I'm yeah. really sick, like 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 not like I have a cold or the sniffles, like when I'm really sick, all I want to do is cry. I don't do it, <laughs> but like it's in there. Like that anytime someone's like, yeah. "Hey, how you feel?" and I just want to like <sighs> it's just the worst feel. Like people say like guys deal with sickness worse than women 100%. 100%. 100%. percent true. Yeah. Ron will have like fucking her arm falling off and she still goes to work. Like I wake up yeah. and I feel a little off. I'm like, I think I'm going to take a personal day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my wife gets sick and like has no choice, but to still deal with my son because he's a three year old boy and wants his mother for everything, yeah. no matter how hard I fucking try. I literally, there have been nights and it's just total tangent by the way. And we're switching right after this story. I promise everybody <laughs> there have been nights where he's crying and upset. And she has to go in multiple times to try and get him to go down for for sleep. And after like the third time, she comes out and she's like exasperated. She's she's exhausted. She wants to go to bed. I'm like, I got this one. And I go in there and I literally have to tell my son that mommy's asleep to get him to go to bed. He's like, no. And I'm like, she's asleep, buddy. And I'm like, she's tired. She you have to go to bed too. Only way I can get him to go down is if he thinks that she's not physically available to. Him. I, I would go further. I'd be like, your mom left. She might not come back. It's just me and you now. So we're going to have to figure this out. She said something about cigarettes. It, it didn't it initially <laughs> trick my suspicion, but it should have. because She doesn't smoke. Hasn't since I met her. So uh, we're on our own, kiddo. Uh, there's some Sierra. I will say this as a new father, brand new, uh, sub six months. There really is mom favoritism going on here. I know why, oh. because they grew inside of their body and. They have the the sweet sweet milk in the in the boobies, but uh, dude, when he gets hungry at night, sometimes I like I'll go to feed he him, and he's you. just like he literally will push it out with his tongue and look at me like, "You're not the <laughs> one I want. You're not the one I want." Go, yeah, summon the other one. Yeah, <laughs> give me the one with the titties. Now, it only gets worse. The first time that Odin's having a meltdown and can like speak to you. And tells you he doesn't want you and he wants your mom. I, I had to <laughs> resist the urge to be like physically offended by my son. Yeah, you know what like, I mean? Like, fuck you and just walk out of I'm the like, room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There have been, there have been times when I'm like under my breath, like, oh, fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> As I'm walking down the hallway, I'm like, yeah, dude, Saturdays this. are like me and him day. And like now we're getting yeah. to the point where like everything, you know, everything's cool, but like it's almost like he knows she's going to be home within two hours. And then he's like, I'm actually fucking tired of you and I want my mom right now. And there's just nothing I can do. I just have to ride it out. Anyway, that's enough dad talk. Let's go. Halo info. Yeah. Halo info. Hashtag, hashtag dad talk sponsored yeah. by uh, Neralco. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Uh, moving right along. Halo Infinite. It's been out. There's surprise. Surprise. Surprise launched it on November 15th, which again, the 20th anniversary of Halo. 
<laughs> you said uh, that like such a cunt. I loved that. Oh my god. Yeah. Surprise. Well, Surprise. It, it, basically, everyone expected this to happen, so it was one of those like unspo. It's like right. it's like Toby and Andrew being in No Way Home. Like everyone fucking gets it, <laughs> which we'll get to in a minute after this. But uh, they dropped the multiplayer, and you know, for weeks we were uh, kind of naysaying, and I think yeah. I think in a surprise turn of events, you were the most optimistic, at least for the multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, and I just poo pooed it, and I poo pooed it because um, well, Halo's Halo, and I gotta tell you guys a fucking secret: Halo is still very much Halo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this game, you could this you could have told me this was Halo ODST, and I'd have been like, okay, that feels that sounds like it's right. There are very little things to set this apart. The problem is the guns and gameplay feel balanced. The maps yeah. are good, and it's just fun to play. So. At the end of the day, boys, if it don't broke, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is annoyingly true. Yeah. Um. At least for the Halo multiplayer segment, we have no idea what the what the weird open ish world type campaign is going to look like, how it's going to play. Uh, I'm still not even sure if I want to buy it because yeah. ultimately, what what I'm going to continue playing Halo for, if I do, is going to be multiplayer. You know, no one replays the fucking campaign over and over. Um. I, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I, I was going to ask you if you wanted to play it tonight. I have been having so much fun with it. I it's I've had a real struggle getting back into Dark Souls three. Every night I sit down on my computer. I'm like, what do I want to do? Do I want to ha- do yeah. I actually want to have to talk to people or do I want to just play? Do- like that's my deciding factor. Is do I want to be social? Yeah, social. Or do or I want to? Wanna- yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, how have, have you felt about your time so far with Infinite? Uh, I have the same reaction that I think 90% of the fan base uh, had, which is that everybody really, uh, from the gameplay video that they released, I think that was about a year ago now, um, yeah. and everybody laughed at it. It, lo- it was like laughable. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody really, truly expected this to be good, and I'm not saying it's like rewritten arena shooters or anything. It's It's a classic arena shooter, but it's done very well. And I, that right. seems to be the experience everyone's having. Dude, I, I follow uh, some like shit posting Halo groups and all of them, dude, this whole time have just been shitting all over it because five <laughs> and four were really bad. Uh, yeah. And every single one of these groups, like it came out and they were like, all right, I was wrong. Like, this is actually this is fun. Like, this is classic Halo, something that yeah. hasn't existed in Halo uh, multiplayer. I still think the campaign's going to be dog shit. If it ends up coming out and like the reviews are good, I'll get it. I will, but I don't expect that to be the case. Um, right. What's been missing from Halo since Halo Three is, like you said, balance, balance in weapons, balance in sort of the layout of the map. Uh, it's hard to make a map that's interesting uh, and fair. Like obviously, you can't just yeah. have a fucking rectangular room. Like that's no fun. But as soon as you add in like you know, multi layers and launch pads and stuff. It's like in f- uh, five and four, it always felt like one side had some kind of advantage over the other. I really don't feel like that in this. Like it's, it's every match I've played when we lose, I feel like we lost because we were just shittier than the other team, which is something I haven't yeah. felt since halo three. Uh, I, I dabbled in the multiplayer of halo four. It was so bad. Oh my God. And five <laughs> wasn't great. Um, five felt good, but the, the maps were, were not great. Um, I've been having a really good time. I like, even yeah. when we, like I said, like even when we lose, it's like, I never feel like, oh, that fucking map was bullshit or, or the ping was bad or whatever. It's just like, yeah. oh yeah, they were better than us. Okay. Let's do another one. Um, the yeah. problems that this game is having is the battle pass system. The progression system is so slow and you get like a bunch of nonsense and then it ends up not being all that customizable to begin with. Uh, your your armor pieces and your color palettes and whatnot, and everything's kind of preset. You're just unlocking presets, which is boring. Um, I get that when you have a freemium game, they have to do something to make their money, and this is what they're doing to make their money: is uh, rather than have you play, you know, whatever thirty matches to uh, level up one time, you can just throw them five bucks or whatever and get the, you know, armor piece that you want. Um, right, but it it should be something a little more than what they have um, for non-paid progression, in my opinion, uh, especially when, you know, they're charging full price for the campaign. So it's not like this is all it is. It's it's, they have that coming. Um, but overall it, it's, it's been fun. It's been yeah, a lot of fun. It has. 
I 100% agree. Uh, I I actually think, well, like, well, so I, they've already made some changes to the Battle Pass um, because part of the reason it was such a slow grind was they didn't let you... Every, like, experience you got was going to be from, like, achievements. Yeah. Like, get three headshots with it. Like, and some of them were weird. Uh, they didn't actually give you experience in the Battle Pass based off of completing a match. Like, you didn't get XP in the Battle Pass mm-hmm. off of winning or losing. Uh, they changed that. They implemented it so that you can the match XP will count towards the battle pass. And I think they changed a couple other things around. I haven't been following it too closely because honestly, I'm not playing it for, for the battle pass. I don't care. Yeah. Um. I it's just a fun shooter for me right now, and it's filling that. It's scratching that itch pretty well. Um. Have to have full I will stack al- though. It is not fun without full stack. Yeah, that's true. Um. I will also say that the game's not as optimized as I'd hoped for. Um. It uh, especially streaming, you can, I can physically see frames dropping unless I uh, don't have like if this replay buffer on for OBS, I can't run that. Mm-hmm. Uh, even then, I still see it. I saw it the other night watching um, how was his name? Big streamer, uh, Summit Summit One G. I was playing it. He's he's pretty good at arena shooters like that. Um, he was doing he was doing pretty well, but he was his his stream was like choppy at points. Yeah, uh, I think they still have some optimization to do for PC. But um, for the most part, it runs pretty good. I just I knocked my settings down a little bit and, and you know, full screened it and all that good stuff. And it seems to have made up the difference in that space. Uh, I also just so I don't forget this last episode, I promised to uh, further expand upon the uh, made up Spanish words I've been teaching my son. So um, we'll talk about that at the end of the podcast. OK, thank goodness. So uh, I'll, I'll try really to remember it because I'm thinking one of them might be the episode title here. Um, OK. Day after last episode, Spider-Man, sorry, two days after last week's episode, Spider-Man No Way Home's second trailer dropped. Some people expected it to show Andrew and Toby. I was on the fence. Um, there have been rumors that there were internal squabbles between Sony and Marvel with Sony wanting to give away the whole bag and show them and Marvel not wanting to. I'm not sure if that's true. It sounds like it could be true. Uh, Sony's pretty notorious for... I'm feeling a little desperate yeah. <laughs> at times. You know what I mean? Like, um, so the trailer came out. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, because we're going to talk about the whole thing is that uh, they do not appear. However, there have been quite a few videos that have come out since that are pretty good evidence that they were scrubbed from some of those scenes. And we, mm-hmm. so anyway, the, the trailer comes out, we see some more of the doc Ock bridge scene, but then we really, really delve into the story of the movie, or at least the broad strokes of it. Um, you know, we, we knew from the first trailer, Strange helps Peter or tries to help Peter with people forgetting his name by doing the spell, to which Peter promptly fucks up by kind of interrupting him while he's doing it and saying, but, well, wait, I didn't like he hadn't thought the whole thing through. He didn't want anybody to remember he was Spider-Man, but that means Aunt May. That means Happy Hogan. That means um, that means Zendaya's MJ. That means his friend Ned, all these people who've been with him through this whole journey. And he starts asking all these questions and messes it up and something horribly cataclysmic looks like it happens. Uh, this this trailer kind of starts off with the uh, that gets all that out of the way. He shows up in Strange's doorstep and then you hear Strange basically saying, um, ever since we botched that spell, we've been getting visitors from everywhere, which is which is a cool line. Uh, and this trailer really runs the gamut, in my opinion, of cool and shitty lines. There's the, there's one or two <laughs> really cool lines. And there's one or two really shitty lines. The whole gist of it is we see Doc Ock. We see Jamie Foxx's return as Electro. We see Thomas Hayden Church as Sandman, which is, I don't know why I love seeing him back so much. Yeah. Um, I, he was one of the more earnest parts of Spider-Man 3. And I, I just agree. seeing him, him back is interesting. Uh, Green Goblin. Oh, boy. We even get some fucking dialogue from Willem Dafoe. And it's so juicy. I love hearing him do the voice again. Hasn't lost a step, man. I love Willem Dafoe. Um, who else do we see? That's uh, we see Lizard, Lizard from yeah. the Amazing Spider-Man Two, and there's a lot that goes on in this trailer. We're not going to go over beat for beat, but there are two <laughs> things that I want to. Every point villain out. that you mentioned, you had like a companion, like oh uh, Alfred Molina, who I loved in Spider-Man Two, and they're like, and we also see Lizard. Anyway, just shows you well, how this, memorable of a fucking villain that I he mean, was. Oh my god, that, he's not. You yeah. know, <laughs> he played an okay Doctor Connor, but I mean, the, the Lizard is a CGI monstrosity. Yeah. I had no. There was no attachment or I had no sympathy for him because his plan turned into evil genius schemes of yeah. like turn everyone into a lizard. What the fuck is that going to do? I don't understand all these original Raimi trilogy, Spider-Man villains for the most part, besides Venom 
had some sort of sadness or tragedy to them. Even yeah. Willem Dafoe's Goblin, who went kind of crazy from the serum, but, you know, still loved his son. I don't know. That's maybe stretching it with him. He's a little crazy. No, but- man. It, listen, you can shit on Raimi's Spider-Man, but you cannot tell me that the end where he says, don't tell Harry right before he dies. Oh, isn't yeah. Fucking heart wrenching. Oh, my it God. It is. It is. It is. It is. Uh, but I'm going to point out two things. I'm going to point out, I, in my opinion, the best of both worlds in the dialogue in this movie. First off, listening to Alfred Molina say anything is one of my newfound kinks. I will, uh, I'm going to furiously masturbate while watching this movie. <laughs> uh, by the way, this is not for listeners. This is just for me and you. Um, uh, I, I've told my wife that I'm going, I have, I have no choice, but to see Spider-Man like release day. Yeah. I like, I just, uh, whether or not it's amazing, I don't care. Uh, that was not a Spider-Man pun saying amazing, but I guess it kind of was. Um, she's still not comfy going to the theaters, but gave me her blessing to go see it with other people. So if you guys are going to go, we should play in that. Yeah, night, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Open it, whatever. Figure it out. Uh, which means I don't have to find a babysitter. if She's not going. So really it's, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what, anyway, tickets go on sale yeah, November 29th. We'll in Thank you. Marvel for, what, what yeah. could he really do in a cage while we're gone? He'll be all exactly. Right. He can, nothing. Yeah. Throw some milk in there. His diaper will hold for two hours. Yeah. Um, you know, thanks to Marvel for sponsoring that segment. Tickets go on sale November 29th. Um, Back to my points about the worst and best lines. Alfred Molina says you're going out into the night chasing ghosts, which the, just the delivery on that mm-hmm. was fucking amazing. And it was, it's such a beautiful line and it, it, it follows up in a conversation unless it's horribly clipped out of context, uh, where strange is saying that all these villains died at the hands of Spider-Man, uh, which we know is not true. So something weird's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, either the variants where they did actually die to him or, uh, Strange is just incorrect. I don't know. Maybe he's get, grasping his straws for the reasons here. Alfred Molina certainly did not die at Spider-Man's hands. He and he himself would know that, but uh, which is weird as to why he delivers the line. But the line is elegant and beautiful, regardless. Uh, you're flying out into the out into the darkness to fight ghosts. I thought it was a gorgeous line. Mm-hmm. And on the other end of that gamut, we have um. I know what you're gonna say. I know what it Scooby is. Do this crap. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> Just uh, bad. From Doctor Strange. Just terrible. Uh, I know another magic yeah. word. It's please. <laughs> it's like a fucking friend's laugh track. I thought that one was funny. I'm sorry. Well, I can't help it. Well, I thought that one was funny. Oh, God. Because MJ's Zendaya always had the corny, awkward, so- socially awkward jokes, and I thought that fit right in with what she would say. I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, uh, how did you feel about the making fun of Otto's name? Because I saw people up in arms about that, and I also laughed at that joke, so I'm sorry. Uh, I It's not that it's like necessarily a bad joke, but it's just that it's a rehash joke, uh, and it was done much better um, prior, both with, uh, it, it always seems to be around Doctor Strange, um, Spider-Man with him in Infinity War, oh, of course, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Um, but th- th- my favorite one, though, is in um, Doctor Strange, when... Uh, Mads Mikkelsen is, you know, the exchange I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, strange, yeah, isn't it? Who's to say? Like, I, I just <laughs> I think that was perfect. But uh, yeah. so to like the fact that they're keep doing it, it is a little like it is a little old. I think if it was the first time that I had heard it, it yeah. might have an effect on me. But it's like, OK, we get it. Spider-Man makes, makes fun of people's names. Yeah. Um, um, How would you feel about the trailer? I felt great about it. And honestly, like more and more stuff that comes out about it. I, I'm not going into this expecting for it to be a movie that like rewrites the MCU formula or does anything particularly gonna. new. Um, I think that it's going to be a nostalgia hand job. And I feel like if I go in <laughs> with spit though, right like with, with spit. spit. Yeah. Like with, right. and maybe a little bit of lips towards the end. Um, oh, okay. J- <laughs> uh, if I go in expecting that and that's what it is, then I'll be happy. Frankly. I mean, I, 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 I love Toby's Spider-Man. I, I genuinely do. I think they're good movies. I know that a lot of people don't, but I, I love them. But even seeing Andrew Garfield, like in the one um, t- uh, totally fake, you know, leaked picture where the scaffolding is exactly how it appears in the trailer. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. We can talk about that. It's just so like, I just can't help but have goosebumps over it. And like you said, like every line that Willem Dafoe says, it's like he's doing the voice again, but now he's older. So it's even like more menacing. Alfred Molina obviously is like nailing all his lines. Um, I think that I, from what little I remember from Spider-Man three Sandman's character was very tragic. Um, 
But you're right. Yeah. It, 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 it raises some questions because his character was sort of resolved by the end. Um, so why would he still yeah. be like anti Spider-Man? Uh, obviously nobody knows, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, I'm just going to steal this little nug from you. The, uh, I think it was the Brazilian trailer or something like that showed yes. the shot that we saw in, uh, the American version where it's mm-hmm. just, uh, Tom Smallhand swinging towards all three villains. But for some right. reason, a totally invisible force punches lizard across the face in this one. And it's clearly oh, yeah. like the scaffolding behind him is like falling apart at the same time, but he's clearly like 20 feet away. And he just goes like, literally like yeah. he got punched in the face. So, or kicked, I'm thinking kick. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of becoming more and more clear. I will say this. I think the biggest fucking dunk on MCU fans they could possibly do is not have them in the movie. I think that like just the trolling aspect of that would be so (laughs) fucking hilarious that I would have no choice, but to like gain some modicum of respect for them. Maybe they even got, even even if you hated it yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like even if they got Toby and fucking uh, Andrew Garfield to all do that shot and then like they leaked it. Oh, that would be brilliant. That would just be incredible. That would be like Ralph Boner times like 30. (laughs) I hope that's not what it is because I want to see them on screen together, but I would have to respect that. Right. Yeah. I I don't, I I think there's almost no doubt that they're, they're, uh, they're in it at this point. I mean, like you said, so the, so the Brazilian trailer was a short one minute truncated version of the full one, a couple extra seconds for some unknown reason, someone fucked up of the end of that scene where you just find his, his face getting snapped back. If you look at, like you said, positioning, he's not even jumping towards fucking uh, Sp- Tom Holland, Spider-Man. If there's three villains compositionally, it would make a beautiful shot to have three Spider-Men versus three villains. Um, you had called that out before we even saw that trailer, by the way, I will give you credit for that. Is that like, if you. you looked at the pacing of Tom small hands and the three villains, like yeah. the one up top and the one down here are not even like in an arc with him yeah. whatsoever. And people have gone in much more depth than this. I mean, there are some visual clues that something has been scrubbed from the, the scene, uh, the scenes in question. Um, weird shit, weird little tiny shit. Like um, when he lands on top of the Statue of Liberty's head and it's just him before the jump, there's some weird visual artifacting to the left and right of him where um, some some shit is moving a little bit. Like it sh- looks a little floaty as if something has been removed from the front of it. Uh, where it should not be like, in other words, we're, we're saying that sequence is probably all three Spider-Men drop. There's a big money shot of them on top of the head uh, of the Statue of Liberty before they leap into that next shot. Mm-hmm. And look, I mean, there's just no there's just no way. There's no way in fucking hell that these shots, which leaked actual months ago of Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield that were on scaffolding with huge green screens around them just happens to be on scaffolding, which is in the fucking trailer. Yeah. I mean, there have been breakdowns on it um, about pointing out like, no, that's like hundred percent like the same scaffolding from the pictures. Um, I don't need to beat it over, uh, beat it over the head like a dead horse. It's all over the internet. If you want to go take a look, uh, new rock stars is a not, they don't, they're the only sponsors uh, people this week that haven't sponsored us. Uh, it's really weird that you guys won't, but um, I watched their breakdown video uh, of that of that stuff and people have actually like re-edited it in the other two Spider-Men which looks sick. Yeah. I mean, and aside from those scenes that look very obviously like oh shit, there's going to be more people here. I mean, uh MJ falling in such a huge callback to yeah. Amazing Spider-Man 2. I mean, they look clear exactly. Homage. Yeah. Exactly like it. And I think I think you called this one before anyone else did, which is that I th- I think that the scene cut where it did because Andrew was about to swoop in and save her. Yeah. And there was a, someone someone brought up a cool point, which is like, I wonder if this movie will give uh, Toby Maguire and Andrew a way to kind of redeem their biggest mistake. In Andrew's in Andrew's case, it would be saving this MJ where he was unable to save his mm-hmm. love interest um, for Toby. I don't know what that would be. Maybe it's helping to save Ock because he didn't want yeah. Ock to die. You know, uh, who knows? Who knows how it's going to go down? I think there's no question. I, I am unfortunately pretty sure that they're only going to be in the finale, uh, which is disappointing because I was hoping for some real like conversations between them. Yeah. Um, sort of spider versey, but that's okay. You get what you can take. If we can get Tobes and, uh, and Andrew back in the scene for even a minute, everyone's going to freak the fuck out. I mean, we've talked about it before. 
we grew up with these these movies. There's no way that I'm not going to lose my shit if I see Tobey Maguire back in Spider-Man. So regardless of how I feel like those movies have aged, and I hope to God someone asks why he shoots spunk out of his arms. I, I hope that's the only question that they ask. That you. was another thing. There were. Oh, shit. What was it? There's a, a, a clip of Garfield. Yeah, with the scaffolding, talking. with the blue screen, and if you lip read him, it looks very much like web. he's saying, "What do you have, web blood or something like yeah. that?" Yeah, so yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, that was the supposed proof of that original clip or the original picture being real was the couple seconds of no audio, just him talking, and there's clearly the hand of another Spider-Man in front of him. And yeah, people were saying like, "What do you have, like web blood?" Yeah, <laughs> which yeah, please, I hope they ask him why he shoots actual spunk out of his arms. Uh, cause it's, it's frankly, it's kind of gross. Not going to lie. Cumbrous. I'm unsure why Raimi took that direction. I'm still weirded out by it to this day. Thanks I don't really get it either. I, I mean, like, I think it was to save time, but it's like, couldn't you just, I don't know. Like, it's already ridiculous that there's a man who is a spider man. Yeah. So couldn't he just also make the wrist things? There was even apparent, apparently, uh, there was a, there was like uh what's the word concept art for web shooters for the Maguire Spider-Man. Uh, I said Maguire, not Toby, which felt really weird because uh, I immediately pictured like Tom Cruise as Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> but there were there was concept art for the Toby Spider-Man films where he has a web shooter on his wrist, but the point of it is to like can is to like uh, aim and like right. condense the web coming out of his arm into something usable to swing from. Because I assume otherwise he would just come out of it like a big dumb penis, right? Uh, which, is, which is what you expect. Uh, but yeah, we've talked enough about that. Um, it, I I don't know. I'm really looking forward to it. Again, yeah. like, I actually like am too. Said, surprisingly, <coughs> it's it's I, I I I it sucked me in. It sucked my spider for, dick arm. Hundred percent. Good job, corporations. You found the at the in. That even the movie, if the movie is shit, if I get to see those three together on screen, I'm probably going to walk away feeling kind of content yeah. with the film because I expect not a lot more out of it. Uh, there, I mean, I have other things I could say about it, but I don't want to. I have to. Pee I will say really this. Bad. Oh, I'll let okay, you. Well, please. By I'll, I'll say this one thing and then you go pee pee. Uh, there's something weird happens with Ock and Spider-Man. It looks like Ock might absorb some of his nanotech uh, when they first fight in the on the bridge scene. You can see. Uh, red attaching itself to his tentacle arms from the suit uh, materializing as if it's nanotech in the scene where he's in like a like a lair almost with them his tentacles are very clearly encased in red uh, and also it, he in the scene where he catches uh, Spider-Man upside down against the pillar and says you're not Peter Parker the nanotech in the beginning of that shot is missing from his chest there's like a hole in it and then it moves from his head to cover his chest to protect against the tentacle. So he lost some nanotech in some mm. form or fashion. And I think these villain variants coming into the MCU, they're going to get some kind of uh, armor upgrade because we see Goblin looks a little different in one of the yeah. shots. Ock is clearly going to get some nanotech, whether it's good or disruptive to him. And I think Electro's gear looks like it's been upgraded a little too. I mean, obviously yeah. he's re reworked because he's not fucking blue, but yeah. Who knows? Like God. there's some kind of people have been talking about his chest and there's like a, a thing in the middle. And they were like, maybe he stole a arc reactor or something. And right. like he's using that to better channel electricity. Anyway, you go pee pee. I'm going to do it. And um, I'm going to stay here. All right. All right. It's a good plan. Good plan. When he gets back, we're going to talk about Dunkirk again and Cowboy Bebop. But, you know, while he's gone, let me just say. um. Uh, well, I probably shouldn't reveal his, his Christmas present on podcast, right? Because that means that, well, he might listen. But I will say, hey, hey there. Hi, how are you? My name's Chris. If you want to check us out? You can check us out on um, Facebook at facebook.com slash the cynical nerd. If Facebook is too fucking millennial for you, then you can check us out on Twitter at the cynical nerd handle. Uh, if you have anything you would like to talk to us about, you are more than welcome to send us an email at questions at the cynical nerd uh, dot com. And, you know, if you if you want to holler at us on Twitter about something that we might have misspoken on. If we might have uh, if we might have hmm, what's the right word, if we might have um, if we might have said some false information, that's a hashtag fuck TCN on Twitter. That'll get our attention. 
And if you want to, uh, I don't know, give us some some praise or accolades or just chime in on something that you wanted to talk about, you could 100% do that as well. And that would be with a hashtag AskTC. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it, boys and girls, children of all ages, young adults. <laughs> We're like a circus. We, we take all ages. Um, except for, you know, we might curse and, and talk about come coming out of Tobey Maguire's arms, in which case you probably are horrified if you're listening to this in front of your parents. So uh, to that, I would say, come, come, comedy, come, suck dicks and eat my cum. The end. All right. <laughs> Can't uh, wait to yeah. play that one back. Well, I was just telling everybody how we're family friendly. <laughs> so Extremely. I think we got through everything there. Uh, Twitter, email, Facebook. <laughs> and if uh, Facebook is too millennial for you, Twitter. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into it. So literally only because the two of us hadn't seen it and we decided to talk shit on Christopher Nolan last week, we both watched Dunkirk this week. I would very much love for you to give your thoughts on this film first, because I have no idea what to expect. We've not talked about this. Okay. Uh, And I obviously know how I feel about it. So how how did you, how did, how did Dunkirk treat you? Dunkirk was a very good movie. Uh, uh, Yeah. I, I, I was, I was surprised because it started off in a way that like, I wasn't into it. Um, well, it, it, let me let me let me actually switch that around. The opening shot I actually thought was incredible, and it's like nonverbal communication. I thought was great. Um, it's almost like it sounds funny to say it out loud, but it's 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 not. Uh, the main well, one of the main characters is trying to take a shit, but he can't find <laughs> a safe spot to take a shit, and it's like you hear that out loud, and it sounds like it's a comedy bit, but it's like it, it, in the movie, it's actually showing. It, it, it's a it's a brilliant way of demonstrating the danger that those people were in, in that scenario where you literally can't just find a spot to sit down and take a shit, like no matter where you go. And maybe not even danger, but just how uncomfortable and uh, how there's no, right. There's no spot for you to do that. That's appropriate in real life. Yeah. Um, I I thought that was great beyond that. It started to get like Nolan ish to me. I'll say like, it was just like, not enough happening. There were still, by the end, a lot of these sort of sub storylines I really didn't care a whole lot about. Um, but ultimately, no, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was well shot. Um, I thought it was well scored. Like, I feel like he took a note from the score of this in um, what's the one we all hate? Um, yeah. Inception. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. Fucking backwards and forwards. Yeah. Movie. The fuck is it called? Uh, there we go there we go yeah um where that had this sort of like uneasy but it was like too (laughs) uneasy like you just couldn't fucking take it um this did that better uh the uh with the music sort of like very slowly picking up tempo during these scenes that were building tension um yeah i thought that like jeff hardy's whole thing for the first half of the movie um tom hardy sorry thinking of the wrestler I really like that you said Jeff Hardy. Yeah. That might be the episode title. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like the first half of his whole thing. I was like, I don't care about this. You clearly just got the most handsome guy to be in the most like ace role of the movie. Um, when you finish this, I feel like I'm going to agree a thousand percent. So please continue. And then by the end, I fucking loved his his arc. I just thought his arc was, was the fucking the best. It was so good. And he's literally like just coasting towards the end saves him there was that sense of of that that's what what this movie did so well was capture the sense of dread that this actual real historic event you know like what they were feeling i loved the scenes on the um uh on the beach with the 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 navy fellow i can't remember his name but every scene he was in he stole um i usually hate like smart guy dialogue uh but i love the part where him and the fellow from the army He's like, I thought the tide was every three hours. And he goes, I guess it's good that I'm Navy and your army then. I just like, lo- like <laughs> loved that fucking zing. Um, <laughs> the scene in the tugboat where they're, uh, you know, the tugboat was being used. It's target practice was so anxiety inducing. Oh, when they find out that the one guy is, um, you know, a French soldier. Um, I think he died in that scene. I couldn't figure out if that was him, but I think ultimately he did die there. I think he, I think he did. Um, I don't really know what else to say other than I, I feel like it was 
sort of in real life this important um, uh, battle in that um, it did sort of redefine what a victory is. Um, right. In that, like these people thought they were going to come home because they were treated uh, to people who disrespected them and, and, and wanted nothing to do with them. Um, and they were welcomed home as, as heroes. I mean, they got out and people were just happy to see them come home. Um, I, I thought that the, uh, uh, paraphrasing of, um, Winston Churchill's speech at the end was incredible. Um, yeah. I don't really know what else to say about this, except that it makes me, it gives me hope for, um, Oppenheimer because again, like the whole reason that Way to bring we, it home, um, the whole reason that we wanted to watch this was to say like, all right, well, he always does this high concept stuff and it kind of goes off the rails. Well, what about something that he, you know, can't take too much artistic Liberty on because it's an actual event. Um, that's right. obviously the same case with Oppenheimer. It's based on a real event. Yeah. So, um, I have more hope for it now, frankly. Uh, the yeah. one thing I read a piece of trivia on this that I, uh, just adored was that there was, um, about 30 survivors from Dunkirk that were, um, at the premiere of this movie. And they oh. literally said that the um, uh, the the audio mixing was louder than the actual bombarding of fucking bombs <laughs> on the beach. So I'm like, yep, shit. that's Nolan for you. Um, yes. I, honestly, I I thought it was, I didn't think it was good. I thought it was great. I loved it. I, I was surprised by it. I had goosebumps throughout. Um, there were a lot of clutch moments that were, you know, just built in a climactic way, like in the way that I think tense filmmaking should be done like uh yeah. like we were saying the last thing i'll say before i before i stop is uh just at the very end where they're they're basically like the civilian ships were coming over which by the way yeah. it, it was a real thing and, and we even did that was um it's just interesting to think of a time where the military wasn't so well funded that civilian ships were conscripted to um yeah. basically save like uh uh people who were out on lifeboats from sunken um military ships um yeah. But the part where they see them all coming in and everybody's kind of rejoicing, but then that last fighter is coming through and uh, uh, Tom Hardy, I almost said Jeff Hardy again, Tom Hardy's character, like <laughs> without any gas left, like uses his last bit of ammunition to just take him out. It was so like, yeah. I just like felt that like the joy that they all felt was so, yeah. it was such a fucking palpable moment. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought it was great. I, uh, I would like to start by, by saying I agree with you. Um, I thought that the movie was extremely well handled, and I, I had a sneaking suspicion, I gotta be honest with you, that I, that I was going to like it, because I never had a problem with Nolan's cinematography or yeah. his shots. They've always been, he is, a, he is a master at his craft. I will never, I'm not gonna ever say I can make a movie better than Christopher Nolan. Yeah. I was just mad at his shit writing for a lot of his movies that was coming that were coming out. So I had a feeling based off the fact that I knew this was that was based off of real life events and that I had a feeling he, he did write this, too by far. the way, just real quick. Normally, his brother writes all his movies. He wrote yeah. this one. OK, maybe he should do that more often. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, fuck your half American brother, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was great. Uh, it was this cool, weird segment of, of war, like you said, where they didn't win anything. They just got their guys out. That was the whole point of the movie was they, they retreated. And I think there was some lines in the beginning about how the Navy had actually. Um, yeah, they were underfunded, but they were also like kind of locked down somewhere else. Like they couldn't actually get to this beach yeah. without just getting destroyed. Uh, so that's they conscripted these these civilian vessels. And there are so many little subplots that he actually wraps up whether they're sad or, or triumphant he wraps them up there's the kid who comes on the boat and they say like we don't need you he, you don't need to come and then he ends up fucking dying yeah uh to this soldier who's clearly shell-shocked because he got the whole you know not to tell you the whole movie's plot but cillian murphy plays a soldier who was at dunkirk and because of the way they play with time in this where like the main segment is like a week or something and then this takes place over a day and the blah 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 which felt unnecessarily convoluted but yeah. it actually yeah, it, it didn't bother me that much once I got into it because you start to understand the time. It wasn't that hard to understand where everything was happening. I guess is what I'll say. Yeah. Um, he had already been there and left, so they start off by showing him horrified to go back, and then because of these time jumps, they show why he's horrified to go back, uh, and ultimately, like, accidentally kills this innocent kid. He was just coming to help and. I for a, for a minute I was kind of mad that they weren't holding it against him more than they were, you know, like they were they were, but they, but they weren't, and eventually the the young kid who's helping his dad on the civilian boat 
They're like, uh, he's, he keeps at the soldier keeps asking how the boy's doing. And the, they rescue a bunch of soldiers from a wreck, like you were mentioning earlier. And uh, they go downstairs and he's like, be careful of him. He's injured. And they're like, he's dead. And Cillian Murphy asks, and said, how's the boy's doing? And he looks at his dad and he goes, he's fine. Yeah. And it's because these guys, it, it actually makes me want to cry. I swear to God. Like the, the emotion in seeing like these soldiers are suffering back then. In World War II, they didn't know what shell shock was. They didn't yeah. really understand PTSD. And these guys went through so many horrors in those wars that those guys will never, for the rest of their lives, couldn't forget, you know, the stuff that would haunt them. Um, I thought that little mini storyline was wonderful. Uh, Tom Hardy, I, I agree with you 100%. Started off and I was like, why do I care about these random fighters? And then his story literally becomes the story of this guy who gives physically 100% to the war effort. His, like so much so that he uses the last of his ammunition and his plane runs out of fucking fuel. And that's the end of his arc in this film is that he gave everything he could to make sure that these guys got home safe. Uh, and I, there was, like you said, there's this triumphant moment when he takes out the last fighter. That was just really great to watch. Um, Dude, I love it. He, when he's coasting and he just opens this thing and he's just like, knows he's fucked. And he's just like yeah. appreciating the the view one last time. That was so fucking yeah. beautiful that whole scene and he's like ratcheting like, down his fucking yeah, landing gear yeah. forever it was so tense um yeah i i loved this film i i thought it was very well done I mean, some minor nitpicks um but i don't even care to bring them up to be honest with you yeah, I they, it was that's really what well I mean. they were so minor that it's like who cares like the rest of it yeah. more than made up for it um i right. loved that uh I, I can't think of the guy's name and uh, uh, he's the um he's the first guy we see the guy that's trying to take a shit and yeah. I just loved that his driving force was just, I want to go home. Like that's so yeah. relatable. Human. Like he's just, yeah. Seen, yeah, he's seen all this shit, this crazy shit. And like everybody took like, Oh, we're trapped here. And he's like, no, I'm going home. Like he's so yeah. dead set. I just thought that was such a cool. I just thought it was, it was really well done. It was, he was a believable character. Yeah. So uh, good job, Nolan. You added one yeah. not shitty movie to your repertoire that's yeah. been there forever, and we just hadn't watched it. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, same same for Oppenheimer. It gives me a lot more hope in that, and I think, uh, you know, the fact that we know that there's some big talent being attached to it, who I know are good actors. Um, you may you may have forgotten that Robert Denny Jr. is actually a pretty superb actor because he's done almost nothing but Iron Man films yeah. for the past couple of years. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that a lot. And uh, with no further ado, let's talk about this last article, mm. uh, Cowboy Bebop live action adaptation episodes one and two. So this is probably not accurate for the way that true fans of Cowboy Bebop felt about this. But um, so I, I watched I've watched about nine. I've watched about 10 episodes, I think, of the of the original anime. I've still not finished it, but it's I'm far ahead of where the show is. Yeah. At, the, at episode end of episode two. Um, I like abjectly hated this. I, I, I couldn't describe it felt like, and again, I feel like this is a horrible analogy, but for some reason it kept reoccurring. It, some of the moments in the first episode and, and like the first fight scenes in the casino were so laughably bad that I thought that it was like, it was like, um, Tim Burton's Batman had already come out. And then they made another Batman and it was Batman 66. Like this felt like the Batman 66 version of the actual anime. Right. Like they were just like winking at the camera because it was so piss poor. Like the combat was so slow that I felt like I fucking choreographed it for him. Like the moves felt weird and janky. Um, the CGI, while it does an okay job in some of the space scenes, looks really bad when they have to use it in conjunction with people. Like when the they blast the hole in the side of the casino, it looked really fucking yeah. bad. Uh, yeah. I didn't like this at all. Uh, but I'm going to say something. I watched past episode two. I think I'm on four. <laughs> and I don't know if it's the show beating me over the head. But it feels like it's gotten better. But every once in a while, they still do the thing. And, and this is most not noticeable in the first episode where and I, and I think it's shot for shot, not shot for shot, but it's the same idea where they start off and he has like a flashback of of his love and like the rose falling in the rain on the ground. I specifically remember the animated shot of that rose on the ground. And I remember thinking how that's such like an animated 
not just anime, but animated trope of of doing that kind of flashback with the th- and how poorly it worked in, in live action. I was like, wow, that looks fucking terrible. Like, I know what you guys are going for. It it just it did not work, in my opinion. And um, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. As a non uh, super fan of the original, and not that I don't like it, I, it has yet to hook me. I, I have appreciated the animation. The stories are fine to me so far. Uh, it has actually started to get a bit more interesting last couple episodes, and I will finish it, I promise you. Uh, but this was just a pile of shit to me, and I'm so sad that it exists and that people put money into it. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So, I feel like when you have any kind of a- adaptation, especially animated live action, you have um, kind of two ways it can go wrong. You can have uh, just a bad idea and then you can have uh, a poorly researched idea and then worst of all is when you have both uh, and in most of these cases it is both um, the thing that I found interesting about this show and I have to open up by saying that it, it's bad it is like it's like I'm not about to like <laughs> throw out some whammy that I actually ended up enjoying it it's terrible Veronica and I have been watching it together um, the interesting thing about this show is that what I had expected was a total lack of um, research into the original. And that's not apparent to me. Like the tone is totally intact. Uh, the, the, the guy who plays jet is like jet dude. Like he's like him as an actor. He's a little too young to play jet, but like yeah. you can tell he did his research. Uh, the cinematogs did their research. The people doing sets did their research music. It, all across the board, like this was studied and, and, and brought into real life as best as it possibly could have been, but it cannot mend the fact that it's just a bad idea. And this is what I've been saying from the beginning. Some things just don't translate well into live action. And the thing is like about that a lot from the sets to the, and I agree the action is so corny, dude. It's so fucking corny. Um, it, it like it, it it's it's all done well, but when you have like in the original show where Jet is not the daddy of the group, he's the mommy of the group. It's a cartoon, so your brain kind of fills out parts that don't make sense sense in real life. Like the oh right. come on Spike, like that. It's just like kind of like oh yeah that's Jet. But when you're seeing people saying it, it's like oh like it's just corny. It's just yeah. there's just like and that's what I'm saying. What surprised me about it is that clearly. They did their research very well. Uh, so most of the actors and um, like I said, like the, the people who were actually like the production sets are like it, it, it's it retains the, the tone of the show. It just doesn't fucking look good in live action. Some might call that plagiarism and not research. Yeah, that's it's true, but it is a fair point. They're 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 changing stuff around with the story pretty significantly, and it's clearly to streamline it. Um but I will say this, I, and I can't figure out what it is. I'm glad you said what you said. And the reason I started laughing is that w- we watched like five episodes, too. I don't know why. Like, I don't like it. Like, I, I genuinely think it's bad. But there's something about the differences between the base material and this that I'm like, ah, let me see what they do with this. I don't know if it's train wreck syndrome where, like, you just can't help it look. Uh, but like th- we literally the other night were like w- we had watched uh, episode one the night it premiered. And then the other night we put on the second, I'm like, all right, I got to watch one more. We watched like three in a row. Like we just kept watching it. I, I don't know why. Like I can't figure it out. But even Veronica I, was like, yeah, let's watch one more. Like, and, and we just kind of shit on it the whole time. So I don't know why, but there there's some aspect to it that's like dragging yeah. me well, along and I don't know what it is. It, well, the campiness has not disappeared, but I, I think I, I truly think three and four are better than one and two. Yeah. And I, I, I don't. I feel like there's a good chemistry between the main actors. And I think that might be why despite the campiness being worn right out on the sleeve, uh, you know, and, and, the uh, and the un like unobjected copying of the, of the original anime, like, like it sometimes beat for beat to the point where, like you said, translation is the name of the game. It just does not work in a lot of situations yeah. because, you know, animation is not the same as live action. And I feel like no one told, the crew at any point that's simple fact like hey this might look kind of weird maybe we should 
rework it a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's such a weird, it's such a weird show. And I and think I'm probably going to watch it's more. Dragging me along, it's just weird. Like, it's so, it's just bizarre. And yeah. that's the only thing I can think that I'm just like, ah, oh, let's see what weird shit they turn out in this next one. But I mean, even when you compare it lateral, well, it's it's bad. Like they they had the scene. Um, it's the opening episode of the anime. I think it's episode two in the show where the woman with the, the red eye vials, the drugs, she's hiding them in her belly like it's. Um, yeah. So we watched that scene and, and it had the same effect to me as the trailer with the uh, um, vicious and um, spike near the cathedral window where like I went like, oh, I actually think that's kind of cool. And then I realized like it's probably just my memories of the original show dude we compared yeah. those scenes like we finished that and i was like hang on we're gonna watch that scene in the anime now dude it's just so much more meaningful it's so has so much more weight to it it's so much more somber it's just yeah. like everything about it is is just done better like even in the um uh in the live action they like really changed it around where uh in i, I know you're this far in the show so i can say this much but um, the uh, the woman whose name escapes me right now kills her drug addict boyfriend in the thing. She just gives up. She's like, you know what? Fuck it. We're not getting out of here. And I'm going to get mine on you before I got, get killed because of you. And in yep. the show, uh, the live action show, she's like, we're going to make it to Mars, baby. Like, she's like a wet paper towel. It's like, what what happened? Like, where, how did you miss that beat? Um, Yeah. How do, how do you copy everything but miss the only thing that gives this female character like personal drive and motivations in yeah, this it, show. That's like, what I mean. And there's like this allocation of people's personality traits, reallocation, I, just, I should say. And like, speaking of the whole thing with Faye, they changed her costume be, to make her less sexualized or whatever. But there is like overt sexualization in the rest of the show that is not in the original. So it's like, right. what was the point of doing that to begin with? When With her, it's a core part of her, her story. These other people, like there wasn't nudity in the original show, but you put it in this in the live action. Uh, you made yeah. Julia more of like a big titty cleavage hanging out type chick than she was in the. It's just like you didn't get rid of uh, objectification of women. You just moved it somewhere else. So like, where are? What was the point? Like, I just don't. It's it's just strange. It's a very strange. But I'm going to keep watching it. Like, I'm going to probably finish it, honestly. I mean, I have to I have to stop with the. I do want to continue watching the show. I have to stop and, and watch the rest of the uh, anime because I'm worried yeah. that they're going to shift things around so much that I'm going to, like, ruin shit for myself if I don't. Very good point. Um, It's a it's a weird one for sure. But uh, that I don't know. I, I, w- I can't recommend this show to anybody. Yeah. But if you're bored and you have a weird curiosity, a morbid curiosity for it, turn it on. See if it piques your interest. I almost guarantee you it won't, but something might keep you lurking around. I don't, there is something weird about it and I can't quite figure it out. And, and I know it's a little different because you described it as maybe it's the curiosity of like, what were they going to change versus the original? I don't have that. Yeah. I don't care what they change. I just want to see if it's good. And objectively, I think the answer is no so far. Yeah. Uh, and vicious is just terrible. How about that blackmail line? Oof. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Talk about bad dialogue yeah. oh boy you know who, you know who vicious is that's uh um come on now yeah. translucent uh, i don't know from the boys Ah, oh, right yeah. i thought he looked familiar okay also a solid snake cosplay yeah <laughs> pretty poor one uh okay so we're gonna wrap things up yeah we you know we've been running longer as a duo yeah. than i expected us to lately Same. this week we had a lot more we can review than I expected, which is part of it. So we'll trim it down next week. But uh, we actually have kind of a horror review mm-hmm. coming up next week. We're going to watch two movies. One is Lamb. Uh, the other one is the new Paranormal Activity movie. And I have to tell you, one of them I'm really looking forward to watching. The other, I'm not. Uh, so, <laughs> Me too. I won't say which is which, but same. Yeah, a surprise. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I feel like there's other content coming out this week, but we'll you know figure out what to do yeah. with it as it comes out. There's so much coming out in November, December this year that I keep forgetting. Like we have a Witcher two comes out next month. You know we have a lot of stuff coming out. Spider Man two comes out next month, or Spider Man. Sorry, No Way Home comes out next month. But uh, we're gonna wrap this bad boy up. Um, where can everybody find you on the internet? Mostly just on Twitter again. I'm kind of peeling back from Twitch. I have a final coming up, so not a whole lot of time to stream. Uh, but every now and then I'm on there. Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Dr. Gloom MD, which stands for medical 
Dick Sucker. Very nice. That's D R G L O O M M D. Nice, very nice. Uh, you, I have been streaming more, but still sporadic, not adhering to my typical schedule. Uh, mostly just because I'm not sure what I want to play some nights. Some nights yeah. I just want to not be live and chill and play Dark Souls 3 some more as a sorcerer, which has been very challenging. Which, by the way, um, now that you have like three weeks till your PS5 gets there, you have to finish that game in that time. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at TCN, please. You can follow us on Twitter at The Cynical Nerd, which I did earlier, but I'm telling you again. Uh, and, and to lead us out, I have to tell you, so I've been teaching my son made up Spanish words to replace normal words. And I'm hoping my whole goal is he will say these to a teacher or somebody and they'll, it'll all just be for the long con of a couple chuckles at a stupid dad joke. Like, they'll be like, what did you call? And I'm going to get like a, your son was calling yogurt, yogurto today at school. So we're, so uh, one day I, we we're at the table and I'm like, I'm like, Hey buddy, I'm like, uh, what's this called? And he goes, yogurt. I'm like, all right, we well, want to know what the cool word is for it. <laughs> he said, what? And I said, it's yogurto. <laughs> Same applies to his chicken nuggets he was eating for dinner. I said, these are not actually called chicken nuggets. These are chicken nuggetos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've done this to like like 15 words. Right. And, you should keep doing it. Uh, as a three-year-old where his his brain is developing and he start, his personality, I keep saying is really coming out, but it's true. It just it trickles out. Every once in a while, someone turns the faucet on and, and it feels like he jumps a couple blocks ahead because... Um, He's got this little mechanism, and I know this is dad talk, hashtag dad. You can turn this off. We're, we're just signing off after this, but he's got a little me- mechanized Jeep at my, my mom's house. He rides around in, and um, I, I'd, <laughs> we were driving home in the car the other night, and I said, hey, buddy. I said, you have that new Jeep, right? And I was telling him about, telling me about his day, and I said, what do you want to name the Jeep? Do you want to give it a name? And he said, Yogerto. <laughs> so he went, he calls his Jeep Yogerto, and I feel like I've won some kind of dad award. Yeah, and uh, that's all I really have. I feel like I feel like that's that's all that's all there is. And my only goal in life is for that to come around and like kind of bite me or Samantha in the ass. <laughs> like someone's gonna, right. Like he's just saying made up Spanish. He's going to take an like, actual Spanish class, and his teacher's going to be like, he thinks half of all of Spanish is Yogerto. He thinks half of all Spanish is adding O's to every word <laughs> in English. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's it. We're going to sign off. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, see ya. Bye.